Joe. 95% of who we are by the age of 35 is programmed. When I read that in your work, it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks because I just turned 30. And if what you're saying there is true, without realizing it, there's a puppet master that sits above me that's calling the shots in a way that I don't think I've realized. Is that true? I think if we define a habit as a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that's acquired through repetition. The habit is when you've done something so many times that your body now knows how to do it better than your conscious mind. Then it's programmed subconsciously. So then when the body knows how to do it better than the conscious mind, then for the most part, the greatest habit we have to break is the habit of being ourselves, right? So there's a principle in neuroscience that says that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. If you keep thinking the same way, yeah, if you keep making the same choices, if you keep doing the same things, if you keep reproducing the same experiences and feeling the same emotions, your biology begins to become hardwired in a sense. It, be uh, it, it becomes programmed. So in order to change uh, something, to arrive at a new vision of your future, if you were wanted to arrive at a new goal or new vision of your future, you'd have to change something about yourself in order to get there. And you'd have to change the way you think, the way you act, and the way you feel. When you begin to become conscious of those unconscious thoughts, so conscious that you don't let them slip by your awareness unnoticed or unchecked by you, if you catch yourself speaking in a limited way or um, you're, you become conscious that you're behaving in a certain way, in a habit, and you can notice or pay attention to how you're feeling, then you're no longer the program. How your consciousness observing the program, you're only unconscious when you're in the program. And so to change then is to become so conscious that you don't, don't go unconscious again. And in a sense, that is consciousness that is really the puppet master that really decides who we want to be. I think the biggest problem uh, is that people lose their free will uh, to a set of programs. And so their body is basically um, programmed into a predictable future based on what they've done in the past. So to change then, to change that habituation, takes an enormous amount of energy, an enormous amount of awareness. Why is this operating system, this program, useful? Because I look at everything that I, the way that I do, and from doing this podcast and speaking to experts, I've stopped thinking that my body is against me. And I've, stopped realize, I've started to realize that there's a reason for these things. There's a reason for the habits and patterns. And So why is this useful? Because it seems to be working against me in so many ways. <laughs> well, um, first of all, um, when, we, when we look closely at uh, certain habits, whether you um, can ride a bicycle, whether you can speak a language, whether you can snowboard, when you first learn any of those things, it takes an enormous amount of conscious awareness to get your body to do what your mind is intending. But if you keep doing it over and over again, then the body begins to economize it in some way. And so we have a lot of things that we can do automatically or unconsciously or subconsciously that allows us to multitask, to drive your car, to talk on the phone, to do uh, several different things at the same time. So uh, a habit isn't a bad thing. They can work for you or they can work against you. The problem is, is if you're as an example, complaining and blaming and making excuses and feeling sorry for yourself and judging other people and you practice that and you get really good at whatever you practice, you practice that enough times that you're unconscious to the fact that you're doing it. Um, the moment you become conscious that you want to change that, uh, you're going to be uncomfortable. Uh, it's going to feel unfamiliar. It's going to feel some degree of uncertainty. You're leaving kind of familiar known territory and you're stepping into the unknown. And so uh, many people, when they want to change a habit, um, they have to be willing to be uncomfortable to do it. But habits can work for us. Uh, there's a lot of great habits that you and I both have that I would never want to change uh, or would want to evolve in some way. But then there's a lot of habits that don't serve us. And, and so a person really wants to set a vision of the future, whatever that is. And they just have to agree that in order to arrive at that vision, they have to change in order to get there. Someone said to me that there's a certain type of behavior pattern that we can't change. They said when we get trauma under the age of 10, things that happen at a very early age, some of those things cannot be changed. And then there's things that happen later in life that can be rewired and changed. Is that true? Are there some traumas, behavior patterns that just appear to be too stubborn and too resistant to change? If you ask me that question, 
just a few years ago, I probably would have a different answer than I do today. Because if you look at a lot of the work uh, that we're studying in terms of human change and human transformation, um, we've seen people with really difficult pasts, really brutal pasts that were abused and traumatized at a very early age. Um, and then repeated traumas that took place in people's lives. And they had night terrors and uh, they uh, couldn't be in relationships. They had social anxiety. Uh, they had a lot of health conditions. We've seen them completely change, uh, completely change to be happy people again, to, to free themselves from the past. And so I would never put a limitation on change because I just don't think uh, you can really predict that. I think many people that are learning how to change uh, and they understand what they're doing and why they're doing it and how it gets easier, I think uh, for the most part people can change all kinds of things. And when they do change, uh, our research shows that their brain changes, their heart rate changes, their gene expression changes, there's thousands of metabolites that are being released into their bloodstream that weren't there prior. Uh, there's a host of different changes that take place biologically that kind of support the person's transformation. Is there a specific transformation that sticks in your mind as being the most, as the clearest evidence that you should never write off um, someone's ability to transform? Wow. Um, I'm so pleased to tell you that uh, my beliefs have been challenged uh, just in the last two years in witnessing so many different changes in people's health that I, I never knew was even possible. Uh, you know, everything from stage four cancers that were in a very progressed state that metastasized to organs and tissues and bones in the body, a complete reversal in, uh, 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 in that health condition. Not once, not twice, not three times. Uh, we've seen it many times. Uh, we've seen people that were blind, uh, that uh, have been deaf, that that have ALS, that have lupus, that have MS, that have Parkinson's disease, that have spinal cord injuries, that have strokes, PTSD, myasthenia gravis, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy. Uh, we had a woman that had her thyroid removed, surgically removed, and I know this is difficult even for me to accept, uh, and grew a new thyroid back. Uh, you know, we have the medical evidence for that. So. I don't know uh, any longer what the limit is. Uh, I think there's something really cool happening in the world when uh, people believe in themselves. And when you believe in yourself, you have to believe in possibility. When you believe in possibility, you have to believe in yourself. So uh, when somebody uh, has the opportunity, and I think a story is, uh, there's no, there's, everybody loves a story. There's nothing better than a story. And when someone stands on stage in front of 2,000 people, and talks about their um, journey to heal themselves from a chronic health condition. And they, it's not um, always pretty. They lose things, they lose family, they sometimes lose their careers or get sick before they get better. And, and you see this person's persistence and you see that they were not doing the work, uh, their inward work to heal, they were doing the work to change. <laughs> And if they understood, if they truly changed, that their biology should change, and they were um, uncompromising every day in showing up for themselves and staying conscious of their unconscious self, and, and then reprogramming themselves in some way. When they tell that story, it's the four-minute mile. It's somebody breaking through a level of consciousness or unconsciousness, and the collective that's observing the example of truth. They're actually relating with that person in a way that causes them to examine possibility differently. And when you become conscious of a new possibility, a change in consciousness is a change in awareness, right? So now it's in the collective. And lo and behold, it's not uncommon. We just had this happen in our week-long event in Denver just a, a little over a week ago, two weeks ago. And we had six people stand up out of a wheelchair at, by the end of the event. Now, I wasn't expecting that, but one a uh, person that had MS in the middle of the week had a very profound experience, very profound experience. And a professional athlete, NFL football player, and um, st stood up, and he stood up for the audience, and 
When he stood up, he said, I thought I was going to a yoga retreat. I thought my brother was taking me to a yoga retreat. I had no idea what we were doing here. And then he said, I just, I just never loved myself. And it was his act of change that somehow changed his health condition. He somehow upregulated genes in different ways, suppressed the genes for MS, and somehow he was more mobile, he was walking uh, by the end of the event, and he was the magic number one. And when everybody saw that and the, crowd, the, the audience was excited, we started seeing other people have a similar experience. Now that possibility is becoming more of a reality for people. So I will always, I never limit what could actually happen, but I can tell you that what an amazing time uh, right now uh, to witness uh, people really 